100 hours pakistan standard time assalamu alaikum this is radio pakistan the news read by daman zaman the headlines the prime minister says pakistan is making all out efforts to combat covid-19 pandemic with the robust and coordinated response Imran Khan and the Iranian president during a telephonic conversation have discussed the prevalent COVID-19 situation in the two countries. The president has called for a coordinated strategy to prevent the spread of coronavirus pandemic. Parliamentary leaders of different political parties in the National Assembly have endorsed the option of holding physical session of the National Assembly instead of a virtual one. Pakistan has lodged a strong protest over ceasefire violations by the Indian forces along the line of control resulting in serious injuries to innocent civilians. The American Commission on International Religious Freedom has called for the State Department to add India into a blacklist of countries that have failed to uphold religious rights for their citizens. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Imran Khan says Pakistan is making all out efforts to combat the COVID-19 pandemic with a robust and coordinated response. He was talking to Bill Gates, the co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, over telephone to discuss the latest developments surrounding the COVID-19 response. The Prime Minister emphasized that Pakistan is facing a dual challenge of overcoming the pandemic and saving people, particularly the most vulnerable segments of the population, from hunger due to the lockdown. Prime Minister Imran Khan and the Iranian President Hassan Rouhani have discussed prevalent COVID-19 situation. The communication took place in a telephone call made by the Iranian President Hassan Rouhani to Prime Minister Imran Khan. They also deliberated upon the locust situation in the border areas. The Iranian president congratulated Prime Minister on the advent of the holy month of Ramzan al-Mubarak. Member National Assembly Amjad Khan Niazi called on the Prime Minister Imran Khan in Islamabad today. Public issues of his constituency and development-related matters were discussed during the meeting. They also discussed the prevailing situation as a result of coronavirus outbreak and the SAS emergency cash program. Parliamentary leaders of different political parties in the National Assembly have endorsed the option of holding physical session of the National Assembly instead of a virtual one. The backing was given during a meeting of the committee on the virtual session of the National Assembly during COVID-19 through video link at the Parliament House in Islamabad today. The Minister for National Food Security and Research, Sayyid Fakhar Imam, chaired the meeting. The parliamentary leaders were of the view that the Parliament embodies the will of the people, therefore it should be made functional to continue its role of parliamentary oversight on executive. They extended their all-out support to the Speaker National Assembly in the conduct of the session of the Assembly in presence of the pandemic. Taking part in the meeting, Pakistan People's Party parliamentarians, parliamentary leader Bilawal Bhutto Zardari said there is no provision in the rules of the Assembly for a virtual session. Therefore, actual sessions should be called to take up pertinent issues concerning public at large besides important legislation. He suggested to ensure health standard operating procedures in the wake of the pandemic for the safety of the parliamentarians and parliamentary support staff. Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz leaders Khwaja Muhammad Asif and Sardar Ayaz Sadiq also supported the idea of a physical session. The Foreign Minister Shami Mutkareshi says a final decision to convene the National Assembly session in physical or virtual in the light of the input from the parliamentary leaders will be made by the Speaker National Assembly. He was talking to the media after a virtual session of the parliamentary leaders' special committee in Islamabad today. He said the decision to convene Parliament's virtual or physical session will be taken after consultation with the political parties. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases in the country has reached 15,289. According to the National Command and Operations Centre, these include 5,827 cases in the Punjab, 5,695 
in Sindh, 2,160 in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, 915 in Baluchistan, 330 in Gilgit Baltistan, 297 in Islamabad Capital Territory, and 65 in Azad Kashmir. 3,425 patients have so far recovered, while the death toll from the virus stands at 335, with eight new deaths during the last 24 hours. The worldwide death toll from coronavirus pandemic has risen to 218,490, while over 3,151,613 cases have been registered. According to the latest data, 964,518 patients have recovered from the pandemic so far. In the United States, the death toll from the pandemic now stands at 59,266, with over 1,035,765 infections from the virus. Italy is the second worst hit country in terms of deaths with 27,359 and 201,505 infections, followed by Spain with 23,822 deaths and more than 232,128 infections. This is Radio Pakistan. The President, Dr. Arif Alvi, has pressed upon the federal and the provincial governments to continue a coordinated strategy to prevent the spread of coronavirus pandemic. He was speaking at a meeting to review the corona situation in Balochistan after reaching Quetta on a one-day visit. The President expressed satisfaction over Balochistan government's steps for extending effective cooperation to the poor people during the lockdown. The Chief Secretary of Balochistan, retired Captain Fazil Azhar, briefed the President on the provincial government's measures for the containment of COVID-19. Earlier upon reaching Quetta, the Governor and Chief Minister of Balochistan received the President. The Foreign Office summoned a senior Indian diplomat and registered Pakistan's strong protest over ceasefire violations by the Indian Occupation Forces along the line of control, resulting in serious injuries to innocent civilians. According to the Foreign Office, two innocent women, 45 years old Rukaya Begum and 60 years old Sarwar Bibi, sustained serious injuries due to the indiscriminate and unprovoked firing by the Indian Occupation Forces in Rakhchikri sector. The Indian Occupation Forces along the line of control and the working boundary have been continuously targeting civilian populated areas with artillery fire, heavy caliber mortars and automatic weapons. The Ministry of Interior has extended validity of all types of visas issued to foreign nationals who are currently in Pakistan for a further period till 30th of June. This was announced by the Interior Ministry through a circular today. In occupied Kashmir, one person was killed and dozens of other people injured as Indian troops opened fire on protest demonstration in Shapanya district today. The incident took place when people were protesting against the Indian army on blasting a residential house in Malhura area of the district. Meanwhile, the Indian troops continued a cordon in search operation for the second consecutive day today as well. Earlier, an Indian Army major was critically injured in an attack in the same area. Jammu and Kashmir Muslim Conference Chairman Shabir Ahmed Dar has expressed serious concern over the increasing number of innocent killings and surge in state terrorism by India and the territory. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom has called for the State Department to add India to a blacklist of countries that have failed to uphold religious rights for their citizens. In its annual report, the Commission highlighted the revocation of the special status of occupied Kashmir and reports that New Delhi police turned a blind eye to mobs that attacked Muslim neighborhoods in February this year. The report also criticized the Indian Supreme Court's decision on Babri Mosque. It also called on the United States to impose punitive measures, including visa bans on Indian officials believed to have been responsible and for granting funding to civil society groups that monitor hate speech. American President Donald Trump has said the United States is considering coronavirus scanning on the international flights coming from countries heavily infected by coronavirus. Talking to reporters at the White House, he said incoming international flights will undergo temperature and virus checks to help stop the spread of coronavirus. And finally, the weather. 
Mainly hot and dry weather is expected to prevail in most parts of the country during the next 24 hours. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk. And you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.